Ever since the term robot was coined, people have been afraid of the day robots would think for themselves. That day has arrived. Teller and I are packed. We're going to rendezvous with the resistance at the Outer Sanctuary. You're on your own. It all started here at the University of Pennsylvania Advanced Robotics Lab, the epicenter of robotic research. They thought they were doing good. It seemed like the answer to all the world's problems. Instead, they created this. These are state-of-the-art robots? This is the end of mankind? We bought one of those at a mall kiosk for our nephew's birthday. It's a harmless flying... Uh-oh. Did it just catch that ball? Oh, I've been doing robotics for about 25 years, but this is a real paradigm changer. Quad rotors don't need human control. They think, they make decisions, and all of this without direct human intervention. Uh oh we should have zoomed in on his mouth when he said that. Quad rotors don't need human control. They make decisions without direct human intervention. Uh oh the quad rotors think for themselves. Their entire artificial intelligence is contained to their compact bodies. To demonstrate, VJ and his evil minions give these two quad rotors the goal of building a tower. To prove no humans are controlling the robots, the team leaves the room and cowers in the hallway. The quad rotors survey their environment and decide where to assemble the tower. They're able to find the parts required, grasp them, and transport them to where they are doing the construction. Remember, no one is operating these machines. Today, it's this small building. Tomorrow, it's a palace for our robot overlords. That's because the quad rotors are making decisions themselves. Regular factory robots need every little movement they can do precisely programmed in order for them to work. But the quad rotors are intelligent enough to improvise and coordinate together to accomplish the task. Uh oh, they did it. What are they gonna use that for? Okay, catching a ball, building a little tower in the lab is no big deal. That's no threat to us. Having robots with cameras flying into buildings could be useful in a search and rescue type situation. It could be used uh, by the military to determine if there are bad guys waiting to, you know, blow their heads off. Okay, there's an upside to these scary robots. They might be good at catching bad guys. The crew sets up a test. They hit a cardboard cutout of a couple of bad guys somewhere in... Uh-oh, is that... That's us. Shh, quiet, Teller. The human overlords are still cooling their heels in the hall. That quad rotor is trying to fight us all on its own. As the robot starts up, it knows nothing about the world around it, just like we would when we get into a location that we have no idea where we've been. Cameras and sensors mounted on his body scan the surrounding area, constructing this three-dimensional map in real time. Uh-oh. The robot looks around the world, gets a picture or a representation of that world in the form of a map, and then makes decisions on where to go in order to get more and more information. Uh-oh, it's creating its own map. So when it encounters obstacles like this one, it knows how to avoid it in the future. The quad rotor also remembers specifically what it's looking for, in this case, us, and searches every inch of the room, scanning and mapping until, uh-oh, colder, colder. Freezing, freezing, uh-oh. We're not the bad guys. We weren't going anywhere. There's no reason to join the resistance. Robots are our friends. Did scientists at the University of Pennsylvania really invent robots who could think on their own? Or was that tonight's lie? Was it just a few guys with joysticks controlling the quad rotors? We come back.